Hello everyone and welcome to Rambling Through History. My name is Jacob. Throughout history, there have been many great military inventions that changed the playing field in certain areas. And today we'll be taking a look into Korea, where one of these weapons helped change the tide against an overwhelming enemy. That weapon would be called the Hoacha. Also today, we're going to be trying a new way of my videos being structures. I hope you guys enjoy. Military weapons and equipment have greatly changed over the years, and in the 15th century Korea, the military preferred a multiple rocket launcher known as the Hoacha. The launcher could fire 200 rocket-powered arrows, and if you were unlucky to see the Hoacha in your area, it was definitely time to leave. The weapon was designed to cause horrific damage, and you did not want to be located anywhere it was being fired at. The Hoacha was used in the defense of the Korean Peninsula against the Japanese, and was especially helpful towards the end of the 15th century. Today, we're going to take a look at the birth of the Hoacha, how it worked, what it looked like, the battles it won, and its retirement. When looking at the beginning of the Hoacha, historians believe that the Hoacha was invented about 200 years apart from the first time gunpowder was implemented during the 15th century. It's unclear the exact date when the weapon was first invented, but the Hoacha was likely developed around the same time when gunpowder was first manufactured in Korea, approximately by the 14th century. People can credit Cho Muswan and his son Hassan Muswan, who first developed a version of gunpowder which advanced the production of gunpowder. It's generally believed that the Hoacha was originally used as a defensive weapon. And by the middle of the 15th century, during the Hozin Dynasty, the weapon was manufactured in bulk by King Mung Jong. The king ordered that the weapon should be able to fire 200 projectiles at once. He also wanted the ammunition to be improved, but Whatever he wanted, it was definitely delivered on. The Hoacha greatly changed the way that military fighters and warriors operated in battles. It was one of the first rocket launchers, which consisted of two wheeled cart that was mounted on a board with several holes carved into the board. The holes were filled with a Sing Jon, which was a machined arrow about 1.1 meters in length, and that was propelled by a paper tube filled with gunpowder that was attached to each shaft of the arrow. The Sing Jon was the earliest form of a rocket. When launched, they could travel up to 2,000 meters, which is over a mile. And this was just the 15th century. It might be kind of hard to believe that there was this kind of weapon in use during the 15th century, but the Koreans were very skilled in many arts, including, of course, military hardware. The Hoacha was similar to a handcart with a wooden launch pad on the top. The back side of the board had two pin alarms which allowed the operator to push and pull the device wherever it needed to go. It also featured a vertical strip that was designed for inclined attacks and it could even be positioned in an upward position so that arrows could go farther. The wheels were also typically fastened by wooden pivots and iron axles and they closely resembled the modern day versions of a wagon wheel. While many Hoachas were made of pine wood, the weapon's ropes were also made of a hemp strain of cannabis sativa plant. The construction of these weapons required a very del delicate work. Because of this, the Korean army chose skilled engineers and blacksmiths to make repairs and build Hoachas. And of course, if the weapons ever suffered any damage from poor road conditions, bad weather, or battles, the engineers knew exactly what to do to make sure they were repaired and back into their original state. The engineers designed the Hoachas to be different than any other weapon you might have seen, especially the cannons and mortars used in Western warfare during the Middle Ages. And towards the 16th century, those weapons needed heavy iron balls, but not Hoachas. The engineers designed the Singjon, which was, again, small arrows specifically for the Hoachas. And their thin, light design made the Hoachas effective and easily maneuverable weapons. However wonderful this design might seem, the engineers still faced several challenges with the weapon. The trajectory was fairly flat and the operators had to increase the elevation while firing the weapon. And any kind of harsh weather conditions including wind, humidity, and rain limited the weapon's striking distance to about 100 meters away. By 1592, Korea felt intensely threatened by the Japanese. The opposing Japanese forces invaded the country, which was launched by the Japanese warrior Toyotomi Hidoshi. He had the ambitions to conquer the Korean Peninsula on his way to invading China. And by this point, Korea felt mostly defenseless. 
what we know now today as the Imjin Wars, which lasted from 1592 to 1598. Japan occupied the Korean Peninsula and captured several cities and fortresses, and it seemed that there was nothing Korea could do to stand a chance against the might of the Japanese. But then, that's when the military decided Hawachas might be their best tool against the Japanese. They were placed in fortresses and citadels, and soon after, military leaders immediately recognized the weapon as a national defense form against the Japanese raiders. The weapon was incredibly valuable and powerful in battles, including the famous Battle of Hangju. Even with Japan dominating the Imjin Wars, with capturing the Korean Peninsula, one of Korea's greatest victories during the war was the Battle of Hangju on February 12, 1593. Historians reportedly say that the battle involved 3,000 Korean soldiers who defended the hilltop fortress against 30,000 Japanese soldiers. Now, looking at these numbers, it seemed that the Koreans would not be able to defeat the Japanese. But, despite these odds, the Koreans were victorious and delivered a heavy blow to the Japanese morale thanks to the usage of the Hawacha. Korean soldiers used 40 Hawachas mounted on the outer walls of their fortress, which the Japanese tried to assault nine times, but they were unable to defeat the Koreans and their devastating weapon. The Hawacha was also put on many Korean warships to help defeat the Japanese at sea in many battles. This was a decisive, decisive and devastating weapon for the Koreans, but sadly the country could not use this weapon forever. Of course, there is no doubt that the Hoacha was an important weapon of war for the Koreans and helped protect the country. It was used offensively in naval warfare during major battles of the Imjin War, but of course, like all things, this weapon could not be used forever. The device of course became obsolete due to the use of other war machines. However, the Hoacha is still regarded as one of the most important military weapons in Korean history. It is featured in popular culture mostly because it helped Korea during the Battle of Hangju. The Hoacha has even been tested in modern times, including an episode of the popular Mythbusters in 2008, and it proved that the supposed quote-unquote myth that the Hoacha could actually launch 200 arrows at once. Thank you guys so much for coming and watching the video. If you guys did enjoy, please like and subscribe, and also make sure to hit the notification bell, so whenever anything is uploaded, you guys can be notified of it right away. If you guys have any questions or suggestions for videos, please comment down below. Also, I now have a Discord channel that will be posted down below where you guys can possibly talk to me and others about history. Once again, thank you guys so much and have a wonderful day.